It's not a, a review of all recent research for, of PERS, of course. I, I would never be able to do that. We're going to specifically talk about a couple uh, field studies exactly on time to PERS, uh, time to stability for PERS and time to baseline production for PERS. Two studies, one with uh, 61 farms, a cohort of uh, 2009 to 2013, uh, with 61 south farms, and a more recent cohort uh, of farms that broke with PERS between 2014 and 2016. We're talking about 107 herds in the second cohort, and we are going to summarize uh, the, those findings, compile the data, and, and try to understand factors associated on how to decrease that time to uh, stability and time to baseline production. Uh, the big take home is that we believe that we are doing a, a good job as an industry collaboratively in, in regards to time to negative uh, pig or time to stability, but we're not doing great. There is still a lot, lots of opportunities to not only decrease that uh, medium or expected time to, to stability, but also to increase the success rate of actually reaching stable. As we, we will see, there are not all herds that start the program to reach stability, they get there, and so let's let's look at the at the findings here. I will start with the summary of what we saw, combining the results from those two cohorts, 61 plus 107. We're talking about results from 168 breeding herds. Uh, I should have said that the lead author, the lead uh, uh, investigators for that second cohort were Carl. Uh, Beth Lack and Dr. Mor uh, Bob Morrison. Uh, so what we saw in those, uh, overall in those studies was a success rate of 60 uh, to 80% of success of reaching stability. 80% of herds in that first cohort of 61 herds, they reached uh, stable, and only 60% of the second cohort of herds, 107 herds, reached uh, stability. We're going to discuss a little bit on things that we think uh, are associated with that difference. We also saw a big variation of time to stability, 24 to 60 weeks to reach the fourth negative test. Just reminding that when we talk about stability, we're talking about diagnostics, we're talking about reaching, getting four consecutive negative results of PCR, uh, of pig blood, uh, at least 30 samples of pig sera and testing over time, so when you reach four consecutive uh, negative tests, uh, herd is called stable. There are two ways to do that. At that first study, we, we defined stability as the, the fir very first test, followed by three negative tests we called stable. In the second study, the authors prefer to, to uh, call the fourth uh, negative test. So, so just to summarize, 24 weeks to 60 weeks was the time to reach the fourth negative test or if you want to consider the first negative test, just go back 12 weeks. So we're talking about some 12 uh, uh, weeks to, to about a year in, in the, very, in the uh, range of uh, stability. So the TTS, the time to stability, and the probability to reach stable, uh, they were better in the 2009 to 2013 cohort, as we said, compared to the more, more recent cohort. And the main differences, as we're going to talk about more in detail during the presentation, between those two cohorts was that the first cohort uh, the six, with 61 herds, all of them did herd closure. They did whole herd exposure with either uh, uh, with a live uh, virus, either serum inoculation or use of vaccine. And, of course, the PERS viruses were different uh, between those two uh, cohorts. So herd closure, whole herd exposure, in, in PERS itself was uh, th those factors, as we're going to talk more about the presentation, were the, the differences between the cohorts. Another study that we're going to uh, show a slide here about is TTS at farrowing. More specifically, specifically time to test negative uh, at the farrowing, the first 24 hours testing pigs uh, uh, within 24 hours of uh, birth. And the best results were at uh, eight weeks after uh, PERS detection, and the median time there was about 20 uh, weeks. So 
uh, what that tell, uh, tells us is is that uh, pigs uh, they reach uh, they reach stability at birth first, and then of course there is some trans transmission going on in the farrowing house, and it takes uh, more time to reach stability when you test pigs at weaning. So. So there is, we understand that there is a lot of opportunity to decrease the overall time to uh, stability at weaning by influencing that uh, uh, circulation of PERS virus during the, the farrowing uh, phase, at the farrowing uh, room. And then we're going to talk about the wind down project, which we understand when we, we believe we're very optimistic uh, that that can uh, help decreasing that pressure of infection. We're going to talk more about that. So here another slide with the variation with the distribution of the time to stability with those two studies combined. As we said before, it, it went to a minimum of 20, 24 weeks and it went up to 60 weeks to test, uh, to, to reach the fourth uh, consecutive negative test. Big variation. And good news here is that uh, early TTS is possible. We had at least some 10 herds that had uh, started testing negative as soon as 12 weeks after um, PERS uh, detection and intervention and were uh, obtained the fourth negative test by 24 to, to 30 weeks after detection. So what we are going to discuss here about the rest of the presentation is those factors that we believe that are associated with those early uh, DTS herds. So it's a big, uh, the next topics here going forward, we're going to quickly uh, review the 2013 study, then talk about the more recent one, compare uh, those studies, talk about the TTS at farrowing, uh, talk a little bit about the wind down project and go back to the summary slides. So the first study with 61 farms, what, what was that about? Just uh, reminding here uh, that those herds, what they had in common was that they were acutely infected breeding herds with PERS virus that used uh, herd closure associated with a uh, whole herd exposure or also called load close expose uh, method with uh, we either a resident virus also called serum inoculation or live, vi live virus inoculation or with uh, uh, MLV vaccine. So herds broke with PERS virus, did a herd closure using resident virus or MLV vaccine. And those, all those herds had the intention to start producing negative pigs at weaning. In other words, intention to achieve uh, stability. Some herds were infected with a uh, 144 kind of, of, of virus, some with other kinds of virus. There was also a variation in the prior history of PERS detection, and we were talking about 61 farms belonging to 16 different production uh, systems or vet clinics. And what we saw? We saw that for MLV herds, the herds that did herd closure and used a vaccine as part of the exposure program, they reached a baseline production defined as number of weeks that it took to produce uh, the, same, the, the, the volume of wind pigs at winning that the herd had prior to the break. Uh, so the TT they, they reached uh, base, they recovered productivity levels significantly before they, they started producing ne negative pigs at weaning. We had that, that big window of what we uh, like to call the silent PERS uh, period when you had no clinical evidence that virus was there in the farm, but yet you did have some virus shedding going on. What makes us uh, hypothesize or uh, come with this idea that what if, what if we had uh, uh, inf better influenced uh, internal circulation of the virus in this, in this uh, phase right here? Would that have reduced the time to stability at weaning? Uh, in other words, uh, implementing MacRebo-like practices, uh, strictly uh, not cross-fostering, all that kind of stuff, all those management practices to reduce uh, likelihood of virus transmission in the herd, 
could that have uh, would, would that have uh, reduced the time to stability? That's um, that, that's something that we're going to talk about later on in the presentation. But a big take home here so far is that there is this significant amount num of number of weeks where you walk in the farrowing house, you don't see any kind of signs of, of purse, volume of productivity is already recovered from the, uh, compared to the baseline, and yet you have a lot of virus circulating for a significant amount of weeks. So don't uh, take home that we talked with the, discussed with the participating producers and vets was do not trust your eyes, trust diagnostics and keep biosecurity practices strict until you have diagnostic evidence that virus is not there. For herds that use a herd closure associated with live virus uh, inoculation, time to stability was sooner than that of herds that use MLV. And but on the other hand, baseline production came uh, after the MLV herds, and that window of the silent purse phase was, was shorter. So take homes here, herds that use MLV, they reached uh, productivity levels before, so the production impact in those herds that use MLV was uh, less compared to the MLVI group, but the, the herds with MLV uh, it, it took l longer for them to reach uh, stability. So major findings, as we just said, uh, for that study, shorter time to stability was uh, associated with the herds using live virus inoculation as part of a herd closure program. Uh, there was a particular vet clinic that had a, a better TTS compared to others, and prior infection history was also uh, protective in that uh, cohort. For uh, production impact wise, the TBP, it was better in the MLV uh, herds and also in a particular vet clinic, the same clinic that uh, had a, a better TTS and also prior uh, history of purse detection was also uh, significant. Other important findings uh, that is related to what we are discussing today was that the intermittent pattern of peace PCR uh, of uh, PERS RNA detection by PCR using 30 pigs uh, at least. There was uh, some 40% of HERS that had at least one negative test followed by a positive one, just showing the importance of, of monitoring over time as opposed to just one point in time. If you really want to uh, um, go after time to stability, it's important to, to test over time and have a confidence that viruses not only at a very low prevalence, near zero, but it's not, uh, you have a, at least more confidence that's not there. And uh, talking about success rate, some 80% of farms that adopted load close exposed, they reached uh, TTS, and 72% of, of those herds that adopted load close exposed, they reached the provisional negative status, that is, kept testing per uh, 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 negative after guilt introduction into the herd. So let's talk about Carl's uh, study here, the 2014-2016 uh, cohort with 107 farms, five systems. Uh, those were swine health monitoring project breeding herds that were infected with virus belonging to the RFLP pattern of 174. Uh, understand that they were not talking about exactly the same virus there. There is probably uh, some important variation there. But one thing is that the, the, I would say that the genetic variation of virus from this cohort was less than the, the uh, other, the, the previous study that we discussed. Uh, there was an agreement to, to, to test for, for TTS using uh, the same um, testing protocol that we used in the previous study, 30 liters, uh, pooling uh, by five, so six PCRs of, of one to five uh, pools of at least four consecutive times to achieve stability. And uh, one important, very important difference here, other than the viruses, was that there was no requirement to implement herd closure or whole herd exposure. In fact, most herds most herds of this uh, study, they did not close their herds. And uh, a good part, a good chunk of herds, they did not 
uh, uh, use any, any kind of uh, exposure. They just relied on natural um, um, transmission of the virus and natural immunity uh, going on. So a big difference here was that most herds did not use herd closure. The previous study, all herds used uh, herd, herd closure. And uh, a lot of herds here did not whole herd expose their cells with um, vaccine, where while others did uh, use vaccine. Okay, what did we see? For the 2016 study, the median TTS compared uh, using here the time to reach the fourth neg negative test. Uh, you see here a couple of minor plot, just, just reminding here what we're talking about. It's, uh, we see here that the probability of reaching TTS over time, okay? And as so as we started testing the, the guilds, uh, the, the, the herds, at uh, about uh, 12 weeks after, after purse detection, and as time went by, as you see lines going up, that means that they were reaching uh, stability. So what we see here, what the, the plot shows us is that the, you had different patterns, different, each, each line here, each color is a system, and you saw some systems that, that consistently reached uh, stability sooner than other systems. And so I'm not talking about all of, all of giving numbers here for all the five systems, Let's focus here on what's interesting. What's interesting, what I want to show is that there was a particular system with a median time of 37 weeks, while the uh, other system, other system that took longer to achieve stability, it took some 44 weeks, and that was uh, different statistically. So different system effect. And so that's an important point to discuss and better understand uh, what are they doing and, and how to replicate that. We're going to talk about that later. Uh, Another finding, now comparing, we merged the data sets, the databases for the two studies, and you see here the same plot, but now each line is a, is a cohort of herds. The, the blue line is the cohort of the 2013 um, herds, and the, and, the, and the red line is the, is the 2016 study. And what you see here is that the herds that achieve that from the first study, they reached stability significantly sooner than the more recent herds. And not only that, but as you can see up, up here, in the upper right corner, was that more herds achieved uh, stability in the 2013 study. So the, the probability of actually reaching stability it was, was much higher, as we're going to discuss in a little bit. So we said that in, the, in this recent study that there were some herds that did nothing in terms of exposure, herds that use vaccine, and we, ha we had just a handful, not significant amount of herds that use live virus inoculation in their herds. Uh, as we saw before, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very, uh, maybe they didn't use because we, we, today we, we, we know that using live virus inoculation, there are some negative very significant impact in, in production. So in this more recent cohort, people did not uh, use that. And so what if we compare only the, the herds that did uh, MLV, what we see? Uh, what do we see? We, we, we see uh, similar lines here, consistent lines, and, but uh, the herds that, uh, of that previous uh, study just like in the other general, in the, in the combined data set, they, they reached, uh, the probability of reaching stability was, was higher, and they, and they did uh, better. Not, so this, this uh, difference was not statistically different, but as you can see, uh, there's an important trend that can't be ignored, so there's a numerical or a, a difference or an important trend, maybe associated with herd closure. So the two, and what else, talking about TTBP, so similar uh, situation here, we are seeing two lines, each line is a, is a cohort, the blue line, the 2013 herds, and the red line, the 2016 herds. And what you see here is that 
these these herds, these more recent herds, they achieved a stability. They achieved baseline production sooner, which is expected. Again, they did not. There was not. A, it was not frequent the use of live virus inoculation. It was frequent doing either nothing or using uh, vaccine to to reach stability. So the, it makes sense that baseline production uh, came came sooner than before. And I believe that's the last Kaplan-Meier plot here. Uh, comparing closure, yes or no, for herds that, that did uh, closure until time of guilt uh, introduction, and as we described, as we said, herds that did uh, close their herds, they had, they achieved stability sooner than those that didn't. So summarizing all those Kaplan-Meier plots in a more kind of, uh, uh, in, a, in a different way here, this, this table, uh, the first line here is that the median time to achieve stability or the TTS 50. The early ones were around 24, 28 weeks to achieve that fourth negative test. And the median time was 38 weeks versus, 30, versus 44 weeks comparing the 2013 versus the 16 study. The baseline production was the other way around. As expected, the more recent herds recovered production sooner than the 2013 uh, herds. And talking about success rate to reach uh, stable, the more recent herds, 62% of those reached uh, uh, stability, 40% never reached, and 80% of, of herds from the first study reached uh, stability. So important difference here in the, in the in the probability or the success rate to achieve stability. Now we're saying that uh, time, we, we saw that plot showing that stability, there is a big variation of time to stability and we did see some good proof of concept herds that had some early, uh, relatively early TTS and how do we replicate that? How do we get TTS shorter? As we said, uh, as I said in the beginning, we're doing a good job, we're getting there, but we, can, we believe we can do better than that. Uh, we have to increase that success rate. We cannot live with 60% uh, or even 80%. We gotta be able to find um, a system that, that uh, consistently gives a, a sooner, a quicker uh, time to stability. So, Carl and Bob did this study, uh, it's, it's still uh, preliminary here. We, we don't have all, all results yet. We're still waiting for the results at winning. But w what was done was the time to stability at farrowing. So again, what does that mean? How long did it, did it take to start producing, consistently producing negative pigs within 24 hours of birth? And so what was, how did they uh, do that? Enrolled some uh, herds and tested PERS RNA by, by RT-PCR um, from those piglets and tested them within 24 hours and herds were asked not to cross foster. And the median time was about 21 weeks and the range was something between eight and 32 weeks as you can see in this plot. So again, as early as eight weeks after uh, PERS detection, there was uh, already a number of, of herds uh, producing uh, between eight and 10 and here 12. You see a lot of dots here at 0% show, showing that you had, that there was a lot of herds that were already producing PERS negative pigs at, at farrowing. The hypothesis here, if time to stability is so variable in that we, we just saw that the stability uh, at wind, at, at, at farrowing or within 24 hours is, is happening much sooner. In some situations, 12 weeks to 16 weeks sooner, that's, that, that's a lot of time. Why don't we go to the farrowing house? Is the, is the answer there? Would uh, decrease the viral circulation? So again, the hypothesis is that what if we influence that, that purse transmission in the farrowing house and reduce the chance of virus to, to circulate and to, to, to replicate and to be transmitted in the farrowing house, can we decrease the time to stability at winning? That's the, the, the ultimate uh, 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 measure anyways, it's at winning that we have to look at. So that's exactly what uh, Dr. Uh, Carlis Villalta and Dr. Bob Morrison did. 
uh, with a model. Uh, they modeled uh, the transmission of pairs and predicted with a, with a modeling uh, approach, mathematical approach, that the wind down um, approach would reduce, significantly reduce time to stability. And what's the wind down? That's a very similar approach to, to what we are already doing with, uh, to eliminate PED in a, in a lot of herds. That means uh, winning piglets uh, from uh, seven days old uh, to, uh, to up to 21 or 24 or wh whatever age the, the, the herd, uh, what, whatever it's the regular winning age for the, for the herd. So winning down or winning pigs uh, at seven days of age and, and older and do that for, for a week, for 10 days, uh, that would decrease, uh, that would significantly decrease the probability of virus circulation and transmission in the herd, and with that, that would decrease, significantly reduce uh, time to uh, stability at winning. And for that study, uh, and we would like to inv invite uh, you all, if you have breeding herds, to, to enroll, there is a, a, a BI uh, grant to help uh, subsidize diagnostic test costs, and the goal would be to enroll 30 wind down herds compared to their and, and compare their time to stability with uh, matched uh, uh, herds with a uh, not non wind down. So if you're interested, go ahead and contact us, contact Bob, and and let's discuss that. So going back to the summary, what we have discussed. Data from 168 breeding herds, we saw that there is a big variation of TTS. We already knew that. I would like to highlight here that early TTS was possible, multiple herds, not only one, so proof of concept is there. We should not be happy what we are doing today. We have to look at uh, ways to reduce not only the TTS, time to stability, but also increase that success rate. Is the answer in, in uh, win, the winning down? We don't know. There is only one way to find out, and we were, but we are very optimistic on that and wanted to, to, to test that. So early TTS is possible. Let's, let's, uh, let's keep exploring that. And TTS uh, and probability to reach stability were, were better in that first cohort compared to the more recent one. And what, what was the, what was the main, the main differences between the, those cohorts was that, again, that first uh, set of herds did uh, uh, implement herd closure associated with whole herd exposure. And, of course, f virus is, w w was different, right? Uh, uh, th there was a difference in the virus. Uh, which, which of those three were responsible for most of the, those 40% those failure? We, we don't know, maybe the, all, all of those uh, combined. So it's a, it's, a, it's a study looking at those together, all together, would say that I, uh, doing herd closure and whole herd um, exposure, it was at least not uh, a, a bad idea. Those herds did a, a, a better job. So further studies are needed with, uh, 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 with current practices today, with the virus that are circulating today, and replicate that um, study of herd closure, maybe do comparing herd closure with no herd closure. And, and so, and the final line here is the wind down. Uh, is that the answer? The wind down and slash uh, internal biosecurity practices to decrease TTS? We do believe that there, there is a lot of answers in the biomanagement or the internal biosecurity or practices at the farrowing house that might be uh, we still need to explore that and associate that with our outcomes, uh, including not only TTS but the TBP. But to keep it simple, uh, wanted to focus this, this talk on TTS. They, they kind of go uh, uh, together.